and welcome to our final instalment of our chats regarding Men's Health Week. It's been a fantastic week. We've caught up with uh, many of the great leaders in our sport. And of course, it's all been proudly supported by Stockland Retirement Living. It's your place. And uh, we thought, how could we finish this off? No better man to talk to, talk to than a great leader in our sport and a legend on the green, the Australian Jackaroos coach, Steve Glasson. How are you, mate? Well, I'm all the better for that intro, Clive. Thanks very much. Um, I don't know who words you up on your research, but anyway, we'll go with that. That's fine. But yeah, what a uh, what a great initiative this is as well. So Men's Health Week. And uh, mate, I'm going to hand over to you. I'll do my best to uh, to involve myself in your in your very well-researched questions and, uh, and go from there. <laughs> no, well, certainly, mate. Look, the, the importance of Men's Health Week and acknowledging, you know, uh, at a time where things have been a bit difficult, um, just the importance of, of, of putting some focus on it. Oh, it's very important. I think um, uh, these last sort of few months, I think, has really um, not tipped it over the edge, but really emphasised the importance of it. Um, men's and women's health, I've got to say, but, but focusing on the men's health. Um, we've seen a lot of initiatives go on through social media and things like that, like push-up challenges and stuff like that, um, be the best wingman, um, all manner of things. Um, and there's a lot of programs out there that, uh, that also help support um, men's health, um, particularly around the, the well-being, um, the mental health issues, all that sort of stuff, which is very important too. So, you know, tough times and, and they produce... Um, you know, well, difficult situations for all sorts of people. And, and uh, you know, I suppose making sure that you're there for people, um, being a good mate, that sort of thing, um, being an ear, being a shoulder, being an arm, uh, whatever the case may be is really important. So that's the mental health side of things. And then of course, you know, there's a the physical side of things, but the, the mental one stands out to me because with the health side of things, we often know we can relate. And, and when I say that, men are quite reluctant quite often to go to the doctors and get checkups and things like that. And, and, you know, I've been guilty of it at times myself and, and we really need to look at that uh, very, very closely. Um, but sometimes you can inadvertently pick up on, you know, if you're not quite right, the mental health side, that's a, that's a whole other monster, you know, and, and it's very hard to pick up on, on people's ailments when it comes to that sometimes, particularly if they're, you know, not prepared to share it or, or reluctant to share it. And, and I would hope that there's no one out there that feels that way, that they feel that there's always somebody they can, uh, touch base with. There's some wonderful organisations, but hey, this is where Bowls comes into its own as far as I'm concerned. And, and you know, um, Bowls clubs, the industry, uh, the camaraderie that it is in and around Bowls is the perfect um, uh, venue, I suppose, to uh, to have that release and, and to have those people in your life that you can actually turn to and, and, uh, and discuss with. And I know, you know, even in my own local club, there's, there's plenty of guys here I could call on, you know, if, if I was feeling uh, or, or doing it pretty tough. I've got people in my life now that I often open up to and just uh, vent for want of better words or, or, or use their experience, their wisdom, their knowledge, all sorts of things. So it's a, it's a very, very broad uh, subject. But as you so well point out, Plucker, it's, um, it, it's so very, very important. And, and well done to you and, and the crew for, uh, for identifying it as well. I guess in our clubs, there's, there's, there's people that we've known for a long time, isn't there? I mean, you would have grown up with people playing bowls and, and you, can get a, you can get a sense at times for how people are going. And it's, it's about having that trust uh, built up so you can ask the right questions and, and be honest with one another. Yeah, there's a fair bit of research out there too, I think, about, you know, if you're not sure, um, and, and sometimes we're not sure what to say. I mean, you know, we're only human ourselves. You're not sure how to approach something. So if, if you're feeling that you've got uh, mates or colleagues or peers that, that you know, maybe aren't quite themselves, there's plenty of online stuff as well to look at to say, well, well what questions can I ask? How can I sort of broach this so um, I'm not forcing myself upon someone, but certainly you know, hitting the nail on the head as far as the right questions are concerned. And from my experiences, and it says me talking away here, but but listening, you know, listening is the the vital thing. And, and you know, I know over the years, um, inadvertently, I think, you know, we've all probably helped someone. Um, sometimes we haven't even known we've helped someone by, by just being there for them, taking it on board um, and being a, you know, I've got pretty good ears. So, so they're pretty good at listening, but, um, and, and just sort of helping them through. And, and we don't always know the right answers, um, which is fine. So don't don't ever feel pressured if you don't know the answers and you can't help someone. Um, 
you know, find out what the what the problems are and, and research it, talk to people. You know, we're very lucky in our sphere. We've got some great people uh, in the program. You know, we've got health and wellbeing managers and the likes and people that are well-versed in this sort of, um, in this climate to help out as well. And and therefore they've got people as well that they can call upon. So it's a it's a very broad spectrum of, of uh, experts and just bloody good people involved. I wanted to ask about that, the, the Jackaroos side of things. Obviously, you know, we're in a period of time now that would have been a very busy time mm. for the Jackaroos. We would have seen World Bowls Championships, we'd have seen Australian Open coming up. It would have been a very busy time. Instead, a lot of those players, are, you know, some of them are still stuck at home. We're starting to get back out a little bit. Mm. But um, how's the contact been with the team and, and, and the importance of that? Yeah, look, the contact's are very important. I, I know sort of from... Uh, a coach's philosophy. I, I love communication. You know, I think it's very, very important. And and sometimes we might even be deemed to overstep the mark. You know, and and push it too much. But um, you really need to get to know your players. I think that's really, really an, an important uh, factor around coaching. So understanding what they're going through. And and we've had members of our squads go through some particularly tough times through COVID, through the shutdown. Um, you know, uh, standing down from jobs, loss of jobs, um, therefore income, which impacts all manner of uh, of, uh, of different things that are going on in their life. So it's been quite a stressful time for them. Don't worry about that. And, uh, and I'd like to think that we've been here for them. We've had, uh, again, professionals involved uh, to, to just listen, to take on board what's going on in their lives, maybe to set a bit of direction, um, to help them with some personal development, all these sort of different um, arms of this that, that goes on. We're not perfect, so uh, we, we don't know it all either. I, I need to make that very clear. But um, I, I think if you can get in the right sphere of people, that, that have got these talents and, and if they haven't got them, that's quite okay. We'll, we'll continue to source the right people until we do. And, and, and that's a big feature of, of what we try and do. So look, we've got some exceptional people there. Well, they're all exceptional really, otherwise they wouldn't be involved, but the disappointment of missing out on world. Yeah. I mean, that, that was there and, and, you know, people were well placed. Oh, I'm sorry. That's my watch going off. But um, <laughs> so, you know, but, but it was a tough times because, um, you know, they were set themselves for worlds. The the robust and vigorous process they go through just to make the Australian team for a benchmark like Worlds is uh, well, it's really quite daunting. It, it, it's a it's a tough program for them. So they they'd sort of achieve that goal, and then the next stage was to actually participate in the benchmark event. We're we're very optimistic, I must say, that that the Worlds will take place in 2021. It's been earmarked for May at this stage. We'll we'll stick to that at this plan. You know, pending travel restrictions and stuff like that, but we've been able to extract some positives from this as well. And that's the fact that we also had some players that were fairly burnt out um, that have been working tirelessly, whether it's in their career or a combination of career and bowls, playing a lot of events, um, uh, physical fatigue, mental fatigue that, that, you know, we've realized that perhaps the, the postponement of world bowls might actually help a couple of them that were sort of, you know, pushing, um, pushing a lot, in life at the time. So, so there's some positive take out of They've had a bit of a break, been able to refresh. Um, it, it's been unique because, you know, it's unprecedented. So no one's known exactly how to perfectly deal with it. And, and, and everybody reacts differently. And even from my own perspective, I've had days where it's been fabulous and days where you're scratching your head and you're sort of, you know, what am I doing today? This is not my normal life, you know? So uh, we've, we've all go through our ebbs and flows, but um, the bottom line is we're going to come out of this very, very positive. We're going to be um, much better or much more worldly for it because we've experienced such a, uh, an amazing set of circumstances, you know, a worldwide pandemic, which uh, we, we hope is only a once in a lifetime occurrence, but we'll be better for it. Um, we'll have learned a lot. We'll learn a lot about ourselves, our personal development side of thing, our health and wellbeing. And, um, you know, we're going to take it as a plus and, and looking forward to, to the future. And, and there's a lot of excitement about, uh, endeavours that are going on off the green. There's a lot of excitement about getting back on the green and playing, you know, for our guys, uh, elite events, but also just being in the bowls fraternity, I think is uh, is just as important. Let's let's talk a little more generally. So you, you, there'll be people out there that have spent a bit of time on their own over the last uh, few weeks, and they'll be now starting to look at things that they can do. Uh, what what are the what are the benefits of, of A getting involved with your local bowls club and and of course if it's not that it might be it might be a lifestyle thing and they may be looking at a, a even a, a Stockland village, uh, you know, where they can a lot of those villages have bowling greens uh, right outside your front door. You can you can walk out and G up your neighbour for a bit of a uh, a hit out, can't you? Maybe put a um 
put his cooking dinner on or something as a bit of a wager or something, or, you know, have it, but you certainly have a lot of fun with it. But, um, you know, from, from whether it's a Stockholm perspective um, in a venue that's set up with it or your local bowls club, that's one of the greatest things about bowls. There's no doubt about it that uh, you can go anywhere in the world that, that is a bowling nation and walk into a club and you've got something in common with someone straight away. It's, it's a vital cog in the wheel, so to speak. And, and you don't have to look for things to strike up conversation about because you just relate to bowls and, and the conversation sparks from there. And, and you know, you, myself, uh, so many of the bowlers, you know, have, have struck wonderful friendships throughout the game uh, and from the game, whether it's been playing on the green and we put our boots on and we go out there and, and try and maul the opposition to shreds and things like that. But, but at the end of the day, you know, you, you're still in, in a social environment. You go in and you have a beer with your opposition or, or you catch up with them um, and things expand from there. Things grow from there. And, you know, I often talk about a story, um, Kelvin Kirk and myself, you know, we, we met when we were sort of 14 or 15. Um, we were kids, we were competing against each other. Uh, we went through a career of playing with and against each other for Australia. We, we lived together for a lot of that time, you know, playing for Australia. Um, and we were kind of rivals as well, you know, often playing for the same spots or, or, or things like that. But, um, the, and, and that's part of the story, but a very small part. The best part of the story was that we become fantastic mates. Uh, we're godfather to each other's kids. And to me, that epitomises what Bowles is all about, that, uh, that these friendships come through. And, um, you know, who would have thought back then, you know, uh, 15 years of age that, you know, a couple of years down the track, whatever age we are now, um, that uh, the friendship would be, you know, thick as thieves and, uh, and, you know, we're family basically, which is great. Yeah, and that, that mateship aspect is such an important part of not just bowls, but sport in general, isn't it? It's, it brings it out of us. Absolutely it does, you know, and, and you're surrounded by like-minded people. Um, uh, you have the same interests, but you know, the, the bowls clubs are a hub for the community. We say it all the time, but you can't emphasise it enough just how important these sort of venues are. And, and look, even if it's not bowls, and, and you and I will preach bowls to a blue in the face sort of thing, um, to the unconverted particularly. Uh, and mind you, I wish I had a dollar for every time someone said to me, I wish I had to start this game 20 years ago because I'd be a very wealthy man. But, but, you know, yeah, we'll entice you to go and try the game. It is fantastic. It's challenging. It, it, it's, uh, it's competitive. It's fun. It's enjoyable. Um, but most of all, it's that camaraderie. It's that, that friendships that you strike up. It's those, those moments that you look back on. And, and these days with social media, you look back on photos and you see, you know, celebrations at clubs and parties and, and just small gatherings even. Um, you know, it might be one-on-one sitting around having a chat and they're fantastic memories to have. And uh, they're certainly um, life moments that you, you cherish forever. Steve, what's your message to, to someone out there that might be watching this and they might have, you know, just in the back of their mind, something going on in their life that, that isn't quite right, that they know it's not quite right, they haven't spoken up to anyone about it. What, what's your message? Yeah, look, I'm no expert either, Plucker. There's no doubt about that. So I think the first port of call is, is being able to recognise that um, and, and, and don't be afraid of it. You know what I mean? Like, don't be shy of it. Um, Everybody in their life, and, and this is my understanding, and, and I've certainly had it too, everybody in their life has um, things happen that, that uh, doesn't sit with them well, um, that worries them, that stresses them, that you know, provides anxiety, uh, depression, this sort of stuff. We've, we've all been through it. I know you've had some tough times, particularly the last couple of years, and I'm not happy on that. But um, So it's, it's certainly nothing to be afraid of, ashamed of, and the best way to deal with it is to talk about it. There, there's... You know, there's no other way around it. So talk to people um, and you, I, I think you'll find, you, again, you'll strike like-minded people that, that can relate to whatever's going on in your life. And, and there's bloody good people, you know, in, in our sport. And again, if, if they haven't got the answers and we're not expected to know everything, but these people will, you know, help you source the right avenues to, to get you some, some much needed help and, and deserving help. No one needs to go through this on their own. No one deserves that. So get in touch with someone. And I think you'd be pleasantly surprised about the reaction they'll have. And I dare say, if you're going through these times, you're probably helping the people that you get in touch with too, because they'll actually get a big boost out of it. They might realise that they're going through the same issues as you or have been there. The, you know, the world's your oyster. It, it, it's huge. So um, my best advice would be talk to people. And, and, you know, we all know in clubs who, who trusted advocates are uh, and things like that, that you can actually go and speak to that, that can keep confidentiality um, to the fore. So, um, you know, you, you don't spread these sort of things. You, you're there as a, uh, 
as a friend and, and no one wants to see anybody deteriorate through poor mental health or, or poor health, um, understanding that, you know, could we have helped? Could we have done something had we known? Um, there's no worse feeling than that. Excellent. Thank you very much, Steve. We really appreciate your, uh, your words and, uh, you know, coming from uh, someone like yourself that is a leader in our, in our sport and, uh, you know, plays a crucial part. So we really appreciate your time. You're very kind, Clive. Thanks very much, mate. And well done you. And, uh, and same, you know, if, if people have got issues, private message me, you know what I mean? Um, and uh, we're always here to help. So, uh, and keep smiling because uh, there's better days ahead, that I can assure you. Beautiful. That was our final instalment of the series. And what a great way to finish with, uh, with Steve for uh, our series on Men's Health Week. Uh, it's all brought to you by Stockland Retirement Living. It's your place.